Harold Larwood played for Nottinghamshire and England but he's remembered for the Bodyline series of 32-33. He was a guy who could bowl quite quick, smallish man, but he bowled around off stump because at the time he was playing, you, everybody was expected to attack the off stump. You were not allowed to bowl negative at the leg side. You, it was almost infradig to bowl at the body. It was seen as terrible to do that. It wasn't the right form as as MCC would have it. So all the bowlers bowled off stump on flat pitches. Now he becomes legendary because Bradman was the supreme genius batsman who was beating England and Douglas Jardine was made captain of England. And Douglas Jardine thought we cannot beat Australia in Australia unless we get Bradman out cheaply because he was getting hundreds and double hundreds. And he worked on a plan. He saw something in a bit of film that he thought Bradman didn't like it into the ribs. Now, there was no law against bowling into the ribs or leg side, but it was just frowned upon. So we actually got the captain, Arthur Carr of Knott's and had a Larwood invited him to dinner in London. It's a very famous meeting and asked Arthur Carr, the captain, if he thought Harold was quick enough and accurate enough to bowl into the body of the batsman. Arthur Carr said yes, and Harold thought he could do it. So they went away in a county match, they tried that, just for a few overs in county cricket, and it was good, he could do it. So Jardine had him picked for the tour of Australia, and then all hell break, broke loose in the test matches when he got Larwood to bowl very fast, and very accurately at the body and caused mayhem. The tour was nearly called off. You've got, just got to look at it in the history of the game. And he cut Bradman down, the genius batsman, to an average of 50, which was still miles better than any of the other Australian batsmen. But England won the series comfortably. It shows that this guy had great pace and great accuracy and great stamina. And the sad thing about him, I've read quite a bit about Harold Larwood, is when they went home, the Australians played hell up about it. They said they wouldn't tour England in 1934, a year later, unless there was no body line. The MCC were worried. If Australia didn't come, they'd lose a lot of cash. What's changed? It's the same today. They're only interested in money. So MCC got together and promised Australia that they wouldn't. Douglas Jardine played the 1933 summer in England. Harold Larwood was asked to apologise for what he'd bowled in Australia because he was a professional and Jardine the captain was an amateur. So the amateur was kept on who made all the decisions and Larwood wouldn't apologise because he said he'd done nothing wrong. He'd followed his captain's instructions and he never got selected for England again. Jardine captain that summer against West Indies. He went to India in 33-4. And when they came back, he fell on his sword and resigned to Jardine because the Australians were worried that he might resort to uh, body line again. But Harold Larwood there was sitting at home, having done nothing wrong, and almost outlawed and shunned. Played a couple more years for knots. Then he opened a sweet shop in Blackpool and he was just almost ostracised by the hierarchy of cricket. And it was left to Jack Fingleton, an opening batsman for Australia, who Lau would have bowled against, bowled his bumpers and short balls, who helped him emigrate to Australia with his wife and family and have a new life. And it's one of the saddest stories in cricket is that from a man who obviously was a brilliant fast bowler. In that series, I've just got to check, he got 33 wickets at 19.5. And he was the sole reason why England beat Australia in the body line series.